when faced with a traumatic or disastrous event. People try to make sense of the incident. Some follow the official cause, some believe in conspiracies, and in severe cases, especially to those involved. Some go into a fugue state as a defense mechanism. In the end, the most logical cause is usually the most plausible. However, there are cases with details which cause one to wonder whether something else was at play. I worked as an orderly at a hospital some seven years ago. It was a decent job for me. I got to help others and met a lot of different characters daily. I was later assigned to the night shift. It was all right. I actually enjoyed it as it was much less hectic than I could spend some time with the patients. One particular night in October, I was delivering medicine to a patient. To get to his ward, one would have to pass through a long corridor. It had windows revealing the outside. I had walked down this corridor many times before, but one detail that night made me stop in my tracks. From that window, one could see a banyan tree opposite to the hospital across the main road. The weird thing was, a part of the trunk was bulging out. It looked as if the bark had accumulated on that specific part of the tree, creating an unnaturally large growth. I was about to cast it off as something that happens in nature when I saw two red circles suddenly appear on the growth. I watched, perturbed as the bark began to unfold, sprouting arm-like appendages, and swiftly clambered up the tree into the foliage, disappearing. Unnerved, I quickly moved to my destination and apologized to the patient for taking some time. Now, I was a person who believed in traditions, but was not superstitious by any means. I deduced that it should have been some kind of animal. And then I saw it again. Two weeks later, I was making my rounds and had to deliver medicine to the ward down that corridor while walking. My curiosity got the better of me, and I looked outside. There was a figure standing still outside the entrance. It was that animal, but I began to doubt it was any I knew of. It was covered in what looked like bark. Think of an owl's head strapped to a human body, then give it sickles for fingers. It just stood there, staring at me. I couldn't help but look into its piercing red gaze. I walked slowly away as its head turned in the same direction. In the following months, I would spot the Owl Man, as I would call him, again and again. Sightings began increasing from once in a fortnight to every week, then every few days to a point where he makes his presence known every night. The eerie part was that it was getting closer. Once I saw a tap on the corridor window. And then soon after, it was inside the actual corridor, its gaze constantly tracking me like a messed up looking security camera. One day, I was having a rough time and was not really in a good mood. I was doing some paperwork at the front desk and I saw it in front of me. I mustered up the courage to tell it to get lost. Still motionless, peeve, I just stormed out of the area. Interestingly, I did not see it for the next two days. It felt slightly odd, but I was relieved and tried to forget about the incident. However, this was when things really started to go south. My sister all of a sudden fell very ill, to the point where she had to be admitted to the hospital. While she was there, I made it my priority to check on her every night. On one of these nights, I went in to check her ward. I opened the door of her room and peered in to see how she was. He was there. He was there, standing over her as she slept. The red gaze shifted from her to me, staring into my soul. My fear turned into concerned anger, and I shouted at it to leave. My sister woke up due to the commotion, causing the creature to crawl out the open window. I ran to shut the window and lock it. I turned to see my sister looking startled and confused, not wanting to put her under any additional stress, especially due to her condition. I lied that a bat had entered and I chased it out. I coaxed her back to sleep, 
In hindsight, that reaction for a bat would have made her wonder about my sanity. After about a month, she started recovering and was thankfully discharged soon after. It would not end there though, as two nights later, I was running errands outside the hospital building. A loud screech brought my attention to the top of the building. There was the owl man, perched on the top. We exchanged stares for what felt like hours. As we did, I felt a terrible sense of dread and angst. Then, he let out a blood-curdling mix of a screech and a wail before sprouting large shadowy wings before flying away into the night, along with its dreadful cry. The very next day, a massive fire broke out in the hospital. Over a hundred people would lose their lives in the incident. By some stroke of good luck, I had gone out to buy a snack with a friend just before the fire. The firefighters report stated that a leaky oxygen tank in the tank room was to blame. That together with faulty wiring and negligence on the hospital's part resulted in the disaster. Now, I want to accept the official version, but the encounters I had made me wonder, was the owl man trying to warn me of the disaster? To this day, I still believe the owl man was the harbinger of death, or even worse, the true cause. What do you want now? No. Is it not enough? I can't do this anymore. I, I won't do this anymore. No. Please stop it. Leave us alone. Fine. Fine, I'll do it. But please leave after that. Please. Please just leave. <laughs> 